Hi everyone. Welcome to a new stream. We are going to draw a commission this time. And it will be consisting of three pictures. It will be the three monkeys everybody knows. Deaf, mute and blind. And we will split that in three different pictures. I was asked to do that. And we're gonna start with the deaf monkey. So let's get going. I'm working with Photoshop here with a digital tablet. And I'm starting with creating a new layer, which will be the layer to just set the auxiliary lines, the boundaries. We're just sketching it in there. We can actually lower the opacity to 60 or what. So I can just sketch it in. Okay, good. So I can start recording now. Just let me see if I'm picking the right picture to do that or the right window. Hit record for the videos later that so everybody can see. My chat working. Trigger fake message. Yes. Yes, it works. smoothing here the cranial mass it should fill out the picture we need some space for the head right for the hands that's a good size the right facing us in the middle Since it's a monkey that is screaming, it is like lifting the head a little bit. There are other tools like the, the symmetry tool, for example, that makes it perfectly symm symmetric. But first, perfect symmetry is actually not what nature does. There always are some kind of imperfections. And then also... No, oh, eraser. It will be a little bit too easy, I don't know. I want to draw the whole picture, I want to train my eye. Hitting, sitting there, he has a, like his cheeks. And then his big jaw is going down. Because he is a monkey with an open mouth, screaming. right it's 
going a little bit further down. Then his, his head is like, see a little bit of his forehead up here. This is the lower part of the brow ridge. You can, from this perspective, you'll look like at the lower corner of the brow ridge. In fact, the mouth will get a little smaller because it has its own thickness. This mouth has like, let me call it the side walls of the mouth. Then we have a little part of the nostril. But I feel like this whole area needs to go a little bit further up. We'll leave the cranial mass, we will lift it a bit. It's just a helping thing which is in the background anyway, you don't see any part of the cranial mass. sits the nose. Perspectively the nose is almost sitting where the eyes are. Throw the little fold because of the cartilage. I think it's because like the direction of the teeth a little bit. It gets a little bump up here. And then almost vertically goes down like so. This wall is a little too thick in my opinion. I want to be able to show enough of the mouth later. Okay. Good. So the eyes, they're sitting here and you look from below. So the eyes will be kind of there. It's not much of an importance because I'm going to give him uh, sunglasses later anyway. But just so you know. Okay, so his teeth are here. And then we need to figure out where the chin is. Chin's kind of going here to the side, which means this one can connect to the side wall. And you have that lower lip of the monkey sitting there.
the lower part you can really see a big tongue with an interesting structure on top of it let's see if we can mimic this in our drawing I'm using a reference here Don't have to go into too much details. We will discard this this layer in its entirety at some point. This is a monkey with open an open mouth. Since the mouth is so wide open, the teeth, exactly the, the big ones, are kind of facing a little bit toward the viewer and that leads to some sort of foreshortening. And make this shape even stronger. Like so, okay. And he actually has ears. Ah, hi. <laughs> Welcome to my stream. Hello, wie geht's? Schön, dass du dabei bist. Okay. Ähm, ich wurde gebeten, ein Bild zu zeichnen. Eigentlich sind es drei Bilder sogar. Und das sind die drei Affen, die quasi einmal Mund zu halten, Ohren zu halten und Augen zu halten. Und genau das tue ich jetzt auch. Jetzt müssen wir noch die Hände finden. Du kennst die Affen, oder? Habe ich schon gezeichnet? Nein. Ich habe einen Gorilla gezeichnet, aber der hat nicht quasi Ohren zu, Mund zu und Augen zu gehalten. Das ist neu. Vielleicht kann ich den sogar Nagellack geben. Musik ist irgendwie komisch. Ich brauche ein paar. Ein bisschen was anderes. Ja, das hat bisher immer funktioniert hat. Naja, ähm, wie gesagt, es gibt ein ganz bekanntes Bild. Ich weiß nicht, wer das gemacht hat oder wie sich das etabliert hat, aber das sind halt drei Affen nebeneinander. Die gibt es sogar als Emoji in WhatsApp. 
Und äh, da bin ich gefragt worden, ob ich dieses Bild nicht adaptieren kann in einer bestimmten Art und Weise. Und das geht dann dort an die Wand. Da habe ich eine Beauftragung jetzt und dann, dann mache ich das. Hier, das ist zum Beispiel die eine Hand. Hier wo. Wenn man hier das Fell sieht. Genau, und äh, die, die Abwandlung hier ist, dass das Bild, wie es sein soll, halt, äh, dann haben die Affen Sonnenbrillen, einen Anzug und so weiter, also noch, noch etwas näher angelegt, angelehnt an äh, die heutige Gesellschaft. Mit Krawatte und so. Und dann äh, wird das in einem, das ist sogar ein Laden, der in Ingolstadt ist. Und da wird das dann auch aufhängen, wenn es gefällt natürlich, ne? Asakura! Always a pleasure to see you here in the stream. Thanks for joining. What's up? How's your weekend going? And no, you don't have, don't have to guess any numbers. <laughs> I'll focus now on, on really doing the streaming thing. Why, you wanna guess numbers? That's good. Any plans? Something going on this weekend? So here, this finger is a little bit higher. So I'll make this one bend. This one is also a little bit detached. I actually have to make that maybe... It's not actually touching the skull, right? Like so. Good. So what we're seeing here is the back of the hand, right? Catch on sleep and play some games. What kind of games are you playing? Yes, yes I am. I do multi-stream now. So uh, I am streaming on Twitch, Facebook, um, YouTube. It's kind of eating some of my bandwidth, but um, I really wanna, I wanna, invest in it and I want to grow it and uh, I want to uh, I want to use several platforms to do it. I also am trying to set up a TikTok with some issues still, but we'll see. Ja genau, mit den Löwen habe ich das auch gemacht. Ähm, das waren einfach nur Tierstudien. Ich will davon definitiv mehr machen. Aber sowas ist immer gut. Sowas ist immer gut, um zu üben. Und Affenstudien habe ich ja auch gemacht. Affenstudien habe ich auch gemacht. Das war ja äh, eigentlich das womit es gestartet ist mit diesem äh, Kurs über die Fantasiewesen. Da fing man ja mit Affen an. Okay. So this is his lower arm, yeah? Like so. This is the other lower arm. We can make him definitely more furry. We need, I want to see more about the, the nostrils. Die Nasenlöcher brauche ich noch. Hell Divers 2. What, what, is that a Lita shooter or what kind of genre is that of game? So I like playing Destiny and I think it's kind of the same style, isn't it? <laughs> Excuse me. So you can see, you can look right into his nose, actually. And monkeys often have this corner down there. Okay. Ah, yeah, nice. 
On which platform are you playing that? On the PC? Okay. Yeah, I'm playing on a PS5. I actually have to Google for something to make that accurate. Actually, I could, when I don't find that, I could stretch it myself. Because this monkey is supposed to have sunglasses. I'm just looking for a picture right now, but if that's not working, I'll show you what I do. I mean, yeah, I could draw just the regular... Regular sunglasses here. But in the commission they want it to be a real Ray-Ban, so that's what it's gonna be. Ah! That is a quote. Oh, he's eating the sunglasses. Of Planet of the Apes, right? Yes! Planet of the Apes, I just saw you writing there. Me too. Ape together strong. I mean, that's such an old video, a uh, movie. Okay, let's try to fit it now because the glasses are a front view, but we're looking. And his, uh, uh, his eyes are, his head is tilted back because he's screaming, right? So the sunglasses, they need to tilt too. And that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna lower the opacity to actually to a certain extent still be able to see. Okay, that's a decent size. And then you go to transform. Oh, no. <laughs> Not transform that, but kind of transform. Perspectivish. You can pull that back. And it immediately gives you the impression that it's also tilted back. But still, it's still too stretched for my sense. So now I have to put it back together a little bit. This is it in the middle. Okay, I think that works. Uh, when is the new Planet of the Apes movie coming out, actually? So in this case, because it's manufactured, it's okay to put in the symmetry line. It seems to be right in the middle.
same. So let's do it. Summer. I think another movie I'm really looking forward to in summer. Isn't it like the, the Deadpool and uh, Wolverine movie coming out in summer? And I don't know, Dune 2? Dune 2 2? I need more smoothing now. Now I need round shapes. It's time saving that the symmetry is doing it for me, the work on the other side right away. Ah, yes, there is a superhero fatigue, definitely, and there are so many, I mean, Marvel themselves admitted failure even. But uh, in, in between superhero movies, I feel like Deadpool was still playing some sort of a special role with that very dark humor. It was not just about, I mean, it was actually a superhero movie for grown-ups, right? With talking about kinds of topics. They were never discussed in the other superhero movies. Um, what's Twisters? So here, that's actually in this position. Yeah, we'll have to find a way how it goes over his ears, that thing. We need to give it a three-dimensional shape. Ah, okay. I mean, uh, where you live, do you experience them like around you? Because I'm here in the middle of Europe and it's not so ridden by twisters, you know? Ah, uh, yeah, that would be great. Okay. I mean, I guess that's a good thing, right? They can be nasty. Okay. So what happens now if I... Copy that thing, because these glasses, they also have a frame, right? And of course, I could use my hand and try my skills to do it always with the same thickness. But I want to try something which might save me some time. So I create a new layer through copy and then I can make it smaller. When, I ho when you hit the Alt key and hold it, it's moving down like within the center. It's still not 100% accurate, so I can move it. But that's good then. Now I copy that, because since it is on the right side, it has to be on the left side too, because it is symmetrically, right? 
So transform and flip it horizontally, horizontal. And we move it over there. And it fits. And we saved some time. I think we can already get rid of the this layer. The glasses will be behind his nose. They will be covered to a certain extent. Merge them. I'm gonna decrease a little bit the opacity of the layers behind. And here I can erase them. So, here it's a little not super clean. I think I'm gonna make the glasses fully reflecting. So you actually are not seeing. You're not seeing the eyes behind it. Okay, good. Let's get rid of the symmetry. Symmetry off. Good. It's actually, we are progressing faster than I thought. Ah, he also needs uh, a wristband, a watch. Let's just roughly sketch it in. It will be compressing the fur a little bit. I'm actually gonna make... Because look at the finger. Like this arch here. Look at the wrist, this arch. Then that means we are looking on the arm, not from perfectly side view, but a little bit in an angle. That also means that a wrist the band of the wrist is wrapping with a slight curve. It's different uh, on the it's different on the reference. I'm erasing it because the wristband is way closer to the to the wrist. That's why it's called a wristband, right? I mean, I haven't even heard of Twister as a movie. I haven't seen any trailers. I don't know if they actually plan to release it here. Is it like a blockbuster, like a big production? I'll find a watch which will look suitable for him. I think so. Well, we're gonna skip it for now. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, well then I will... Because uh, we like watching movies, going into the theaters. So... Um, I'll keep my eyes open for that. Okay, let's deal a little bit more with... His mouth. Because they have... In front of these... Sharp, edgy teeth. They actually have four other teeth. Yes, yes, they do. And when you think an, a monkey is smiling at you, actually that's a sign of aggression. People think like, oh, how cute, but it's actually an aggression sign. Have you seen the new uh, Godzilla movie? I'm bringing that topic up often, but only because it's so, so good. I recommend everybody to indeed watch it. Ah, yeah. So you, you actually see the top plane of the teeth and then 
when you look at your teeth, they should go down in a shape like this. So you see little arches. Yeah, Godzilla minus one. Schon erwibelt hier. Willkommen im Stream. Ich hoffe, den hast du dir angeschaut. Das ist ja das ursprüngliche Produktionsteam von Godzilla. Ja. Oh man. Asakura and Schnabibeltier, both of you definitely need to watch Godzilla Minus One. Um, we watched it in, when, I, when we were on vacation in, in the US. And uh, it's the... Yeah, genau, perfect. Thank you. Um, and it's actually, it's from the 1950s. I don't know if you watched Godzilla Minus One uh, in your childhood. I watched it with my father, I remember that. Um, and... Uh, It was the way how Japan dealt with uh, the nuclear strikes and uh, they made up a monster destroying all these cities and uh, Godzilla was always this horror creature. Godzilla was actually planned as a horror movie and uh, the Hollywood movies at some point they made him kind of likable because he's fighting with the humans against another monster or whatever but this one he is back to being like the nastiest beast ever and uh like a normal blockbuster movie has like a budget of 300 million dollars right this one just had 15 15 million dollars still the effects are so good that it got nominated for an oscar and uh you have to imagine 15 million as a budget a stupid episode of marvel's she hulk is 25 million dollars and uh This one is 10 million less and it's so good. And then they, they remastered the old soundtrack and you, you get this moment of euphoria watching it and when they find like strategies against them. So it's really good. Yes. Yes, it's, uh, yeah, you had to go to very special cinemas and uh, they even, <laughs> it's funny, they made a black and white version out of it. So they called it Godzilla minus one minus color. So, it's really good. It's so good. Don't miss it. We were watching it in uh, like it was original tone Japanese and then English subtitles. I was also drawing a picture of uh, Godzilla then. Okay, so that's I think so far done for the auxiliary lines. We are going in now and make the real lines. I'm pushing the helping lines into the background so we can really focus. On this piece, yeah. Godzilla minus one was the uh, Best movie for me for 2023. Uh, second place was uh, The Creator. Or Creator, or what's it called? Um, what were you guys' favorite movies of 2023? I'm curious. Why did the Here we do the nose.
Ah, Top Gun was a 2023. And yes, we also watched Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, it's certainly long, but it has a good story and I, yeah, I mean, you can never say anything against Robert De Niro and Leonardo DiCaprio, right? It was also, because it's a true story, it's interesting. It's just a confirmation how mean the white man can be. Mm. Now, people here, uh, Martin is not streaming right now. What's up there? Probably sleeping, or he just went to sleep. His rhythm is sometimes not from this. Not from this planet. Right. So yes, I said the sunglasses will be covered by the nose. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and how do you do that? Like, do you watch him and... Uh, I mean, you have to be awake too, right? Not tired? Or didn't you, you didn't watch his whole stream? Erase a little bit of the sunglasses here. And was he winning or was he tilting again? Was he mean about his teammates? So now you see the sunglasses behind his nose actually. Just connect this one. This is the flesh between the nostrils and actually the front part of his mouth. We're gonna we're gonna do so many things. We're gonna paint wrinkles for him. I really want to make this good because that thing was gonna hang in a in a hair salon. And it's a perfect. I don't know if, if some people think like, yeah, I also wanna get a commission from that person. It's just great advertisement for me, I guess. The same madness as always. Yeah, but his his viewers love the madness, I think. For his birthday, I bought him a, a mug which was like Pentakill was written on it. I think that's his life goals. His life goal: as many Pentakills as possible. Is here anybody, like, does anybody of you guys have a uh, good, um, yeah, knowledge of, of PCs, computers and all? Can I ask you an expert computer question? Nope, no expert. Ah, okay. Because the thing I am thinking about is... Since I'm doing multi-platform streaming and uh, to be able to put all the chat messages here in one one uh, window, I have to go into those platforms, I have to pop out the chat, so I have a couple of windows open. I have three screens connected here, like my laptop, where I see your comments and what I'm actually streaming. And then I see my, my display here where I'm painting, right? And it sometimes makes the stream laggy and I am thinking about either buying better equipment for one 
laptop, but it's just a laptop and I think it's not so easy to enhance this one. Or to get a second computer, actually with a tower, where I can outsource the whole streaming thing. So the Photoshop and everything will be just a super smooth experience. No. See, it's no, I, even though you said no, you're not an expert, I asked you the question anyway. No. Okay, this monkey definitely has a big mouth. It's actually every time I do that, every time uh, before I stream, I shut down the computer, I boot it again, it's always the same. Yeah, it is tricky because you need a capture card which uh, catches the video signal and sends it to the other one. I mean, the thing is, like, I invested in this one to do this. It was, it is a new laptop. So that was, that's even more annoying. That's why I don't want to right away ditch this one. Exactly. It's a good one. It was more than a thousand. It was an i7. It has a Nvidia card in it and it's still being forced into his knees and I was already playing with settings here. I already have to go into quality mode that uh, it's not getting any laggy and I thought like that was not the intention when I bought this. Ah, I forgot to switch on a specific mode. Like here, you see this little button over there? It means like, depending on what, what pressure I'm applying, the size of the stroke is bigger or smaller. Like with a real pen, when you press it harder, it's gonna be thicker, right? But it's still gonna stay completely pitch black. With this one here, this button, I also can play with the opacity. But I want to have the style that it has the strong outline, so I want to keep it pitch black. I only want to change the size of the stroke. No. Here you have the knuckles of the hand, of the monkey finger. We have to actually give him also fingernails right now I don't make any difference between a human hand and a monkey hand except like I think the, the fingers are a little bit longer So, make it a little bit more boxy. I don't know, it gives the impression that it's these fingers have been used for more rough stuff compared to perfectly manicured fingers. All right, so this finger, of course, is also long, turning into the knuckle bones. And then going to the fleshy part. Um, normally because you see this arch of his brow ridge, right? It's like a nice soft S-curve. But normally you don't have 
you don't have any tissue which is bending inwards. You, it's always consisting of curves which are bending outwards. And this... So if you have an S-curve, it's just of the sum total of all the uh, move outwards moving tissue parts. Like this. Make the overlap a little bit smaller. And then he has this a lot of wrinkles at his nose. Through these wrinkles, you can see that the monkey is in some sort of distress. So, oh no, am I on the same layer like the, the glass? Yeah, that shouldn't be. So when I'm drawing things which are beneath the glass, they should be, like I want to be able to erase them separately. So, and then you have wrinkles there because he's pinching, his, his brow is just actually wrinkling. But then it's hidden by the glasses, right? So you don't see it. So. Gonna work on that more. Then let's create some more wrinkles here. I'm now increasing a little bit the smoothing. Look at the rhythm of the curves. They kind of need to have need to bend always the same. have the a distinctive piece, which is the farthest outside, right? And then taper pointing to the same place. Like here, it has to go to the chin. Like so. Here are more wrinkles. We're gonna make them thicker later. Just wanna catch the overall direction of the wrinkles here. You have a little change of direction because of the under the, the structure of the skull underneath. You have a jump. You have like this and then this again, you know? Here I'm gonna make this line a little bit bigger. Like so and then it jumps out here. So 
This is how the tissue wraps around his cheekbone and his jaw. But it's not always the same because it behaves in a certain way depending on what movement it is. And this is like an extreme movement. The mouth is open very far. This is why it wrinkles like this. Go that one a little bit different. So then this one is going into the chin. And here it is similar. You're going to start with very thin lines again. You can make them thicker later. Like so. Most of the wrinkles will be around the eye area, the nose area when it's getting closer there. And because of the structure, again, it makes this little jump, the wrinkles. Like so. Especially in this area, you have a lot of small wrinkles. And then we make here this part sticking out. Nice round shape moving into the cheek. You have really a lot of expression in this uh, wide open mouth. We don't even have to do draw it that far in. He will be the finger actually. And this is where his head is, where his brow ridge is moving. Actually, um, I would rather say that his fingers are that part which are covering it a bit. And the same thing should be here in the case. The finger is covering the brow ridge. That makes more sense. Ready. Okay. And then the top plane of the skull. like this but I still I think I moved his, the peak of his head a little bit too far to the right so I'm gonna 
Move it a little down. That's good. We're gonna add fur, we're gonna add uh, shadow and highlights, but let's now put more details into the teeth. I want to make the the surface of the teeth the highest edge a little bit more rugged. So, Here's like, of course, I thought it's a flat tooth, but it's one of those pointy teeth, which is sticking out. Same thing here. I think you call them canines. Maybe you know one piece of this chocolate we got. I take one. Oh, wasn't it there? <laughs> oh. I didn't want to make you stand up, babe. Okay. okay, I'm gonna try this one now too. It's it's called the three chocolates. White, dark, and medium. There you go. What can I say? Black chocolate. Mm. Oh, there's that. Mm, they brought it from Spain, right? Mm. Bilbao. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good. Okay, more wrinkles. Let's go. Like so. No, this doesn't look convincing. Because the recalls mask has to drop off. In a faster pace, the closer I'm going to the corner. I think even further. I'm going to rotate the picture a little bit to make it easy. Like so. And then it's going in this direction. Yeah, that feels right. That feels round. Because the wrinkles wrap around the the shape of the 
the mouth, of course. Otherwise, we make it too easy for you. Just there. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, when I was doing the ape studies, when uh, and they were showing like different kinds of apes, orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees with their teeth. I mean, like when you look into his mouth, he only has the two sharp ones here, right? But gorillas have them on the lower and the higher jaw, and they're interlocking. Mandrill? I was drawing. Uh, I was using actually a mandrill um, as an example for, for the creature. Like there was a course drawing a, fan a fantasy creature. And uh, I wanted to combine mandrills and a lion, so I called it the mandrillion, you know? And, uh, yeah, you yeah, are absolutely right, the teeth are, like, so big. And they have a purple ass, which makes them even more scary. Right, we have to work a little bit with the line weight here. The tongue is an important corner we want to see. So. Yes, yes, they have this very thin line here and then they have this blue part of the nose, left and right. Interesting that you come up with that one. I find mandrills also very... very interesting. They're so colorful. I like going to the zoo. I often bring... Uh, like lately, when I go to the zoo, bring a notepad with me, and then that's a good exercise to um, to draw from life. One thing is from drawing from photos, because that's like perfectly still in that position you want it to be, right? The next thing is with videos, where uh, you still can just pause the video if you are struggling with something. So for the cause, they were saying like, pick this video, you're not allowed to stop it, but it's always, it's a loop, like a certain movement over and over again, so you can train your eye. But that doesn't happen when you're drawing from life. So you really need to be super fast. You need to simplify, you need to be able to simplify uh, shapes, like in split seconds, to catch the, the pose. Because then a monkey doesn't care if you want to draw a certain position. Monkey is just doing his monkey business. This is his his throat. It's changing a little bit in shape, it's going steeper up than here. I are baboon? No, I don't. I don't remember that. I've never heard of it actually. I don't know, maybe... Is it something they showed also in Germany? I have no idea. Cartoon? Is it... I are? Like I am, it's like it's just R. Oh, why? Why is the card? Then baboon is the name of the monkey. Baboon. Huh. Yeah. 
So you watched that as a child? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember watching that one as a child. I had other child series I like watching, like, I remember Sa Saber Rider, for example. Or like, you know, these old animes, Kickers, for example, I like watching. I watched Pokemon when it came out, always after the school, first thing, throw your backpack into the corner, switch on the, the TV, because Pokemon is coming up. Those were the days. So here you have the gums. Going more vertical up here. Right. Then his tongue is kind of here at retracing a little bit. Then he has a shape like this in his tongue. There will be one step soon where I block in the first layer of color and this is just where a lot of the magic already happens. So let's do the teeth now here. I would like to draw comics, actually. At, at a certain time. Like, there's a course I'm watching right now um, on a website, which is pretty nice, but you have to pay for those courses. Um, and they teamed up with Marvel they have marvel drawers and inkers and they are like i'm still in the middle of the process of watching it but they are giving tips and uh they are giving critiques people can send in their their pages they get assignments and uh yeah it's pr pretty nice to watch it i wasn't uh, submitting any i mean i was doing the assignments but i wasn't submitting uh them for critique because it was already too late when I saw that because they only make a when they release the the course, they make the critiques and they make a video out of it. And uh, if you don't buy the course right away and participate in it, you might be too late. And I was still doing another course, so. But yeah, it's super interesting. And uh, based on that, I would like to draw comics. I'm part of a, a community that uh, has like a cryptocurrency project and um, like they are always looking for people in the community doing cool stuff about it. So for example, because the cryptocurrency project is rotating around the dog, the shark page, you know that read and making a cool comic about it. That would be good. Azakura, did you play Street Fighter in the past?
like Street Fighter 2 or something. Um, you don't happen to have TikTok, right? Or maybe you are on X. TikTok or X would work. Or Instagram. Because so I painted uh, Ryu and I really like how that one turned out. And uh, I posted it on TikTok and you can actually uh, like pick soundtracks right and they have a remastered version of um the rio stage soundtrack that was a pretty neat one so here are the lower teeth You have a strong foreshortening. You're looking on the teeth from the top, actually. I'm trying to foreshorten them even a little more. You know, some parts I make them too big. Like this one here. So, okay. Still, I made the teeth too big. Two here, two there, this is that, this is that. So I actually need to do it symmetrically. It's to go out like this. And this one is going out. Like so. I'm just adjusting a little bit the size of the teeth so that the left side is kind of recognizable to what's happening on the right side. A little bit for my taste to scribbly. I'll have plenty of time to correct that. So this is that. Oh yeah, I have to go smaller a little bit. So this one will be going in like this. There's another one. Okay. 
That's fine. Okay. Let's look if we can do some, something about the fingers. It's looking a little bit off, but that's fine here. Like so. Okay, the sunglasses will also have to be a little thicker, but we will get there. Here we have the nails. So on this fleshy part, I think I need to merge some some layers here actually. But not just yet, not just yet. I'm gonna clear the glass here with some overlapping outlines. These are all I can merge. That makes things easier now. So. At some point I see that I lower the opacity for the overall outlines which i'm not so such a big fan because when you zoom in you feel you see that overlap of the strokes that was unintended that will Dima ask for for some corrections but we'll see how much we see of those once we go in with with more color maybe this problem won't be a problem Okay, this is the finger. You want to make this finger a little bit flatter here. Like that. So. Go to electronic jazz. Once we have the spotlight on the top from him and the dark shadows done down below it will create a nice effect i think so here's the lip not yet
And this one has to curve up. There you go, the lower lip. Bulges out a little bit. Like so. Because as I said, every tissue is it's not going inside, it's bulging out. So now that looks good, then it's turning into the sidewall of the mouth. Always you have, I think this is the area where the saliva is coming from, right? Like here, this place. Yeah, so I'm sure somebody who's watching was saying like, ew. Ew. Giving the mouth some wrinkles. The knuckles are in front of it, so you have some kind of overlap. Huh? I am. I am? You see me? Okay, good. But still no on TikTok, right? That is weird. Weird AF. Okay, like that. Do we see another knuckle here or what? Couldn't do it so. I don't know, let's say there. No, nah, not really. I'm gonna leave it for now on this level. It's just looking like that. It's actually about the middle finger, which should be the biggest one. So we could be able to see it. Let's keep it like this. Okay. The rest might be just fur we are painting. I'm not 
putting any uh, outlines now yet. Anything I'm deleting, I want to keep. No, really. Okay. All right, so let's go in with some gray. We can still color it in, but I want to just put the basics. A medium gray, right? I'm gonna color the whole thing first, okay. I picked the picture rather big, it turns a little bit laggy when I fill in big chunks of color at once. But building on top of that, we will create the second layer. I'm also already getting there. Well, I can negotiate that I will be eating in one hour. Are you gonna eat with me? Okay. Yeah, then let's eat together. And then we can watch the... what is it? The Gran Turismo movie, right? Gran Turismo. Leave it at that for now. Give me a second, I'll be back in a moment. All right, I am back, and then I think it's a little bit too dark, so I'm gonna brighten it up a bit. And now let's try and find the top, or let's try and make shadow mapping.
let's find or let's define and I want to put the the light source vertically on top yeah like this is the light source here you have a little light bulb Make it yellow so everybody can see this is a light bulb where the light is coming from. Okay, enough of playing around. Shadow mapping. I'm gonna put There, some shadow maps. It's a little bit softer moving like this. Then it's jumping up there, going around. Shadow mapping is around about like normal. You have, I think it's, was it five? Five different kinds of shadow. You have the The middle tone, the darker tone, the core shadow, the reflected light, and the highlight. Five. And the core shadow is exactly on the line between the middle tones and the dark tones. Which is making most of your, of your painting, actually. And the interesting thing, nobody thinks Normally when they draw a picture, they think the darkest part of the painting is the one which is farthest away from the light, but it's not true because of reflected light. The darkest part is exactly where the darker tones and the half tones are meeting each other. If you pay attention, you can actually see that. wrinkles but I think the top side I'll make it completely because it's facing really where the light is coming and I'll make it bright his nose of course So sense that sounds good that looks good here again well, I actually could have moved right there that would have been easier because it's going down here and then there this is where the shadow goes more shadow mapping here I don't want it to taper. Let's 
So try to follow the wrinkles you draw in, drew in earlier. I want to move more in the direction and down. And then here again. That is the shadow mapping on that side, and now we move here too. We will have a strong reflection on the sun, on the shades, of course. Okay, wonderful. We will have some let's take right on this one. So I don't think it's shadow mapping, it's just the shape of it. It just feels better when you taper it. But let's think what would make sense. We have a shadow mapping here. Is there something with a Oh, okay. Like so, this is where it goes to the darker side. Same thing here. I actually want to make here this one too. And the interesting thing is that these, these are the eye sockets, yeah? So they actually have to move a little bit in. Jump back. In a steeper angle there. And then going down. Like so. I'm gonna give it another jump. We're going here and then moving down there and then around the cheek. And we are going to do the exactly same on the other side. And actually, and I'm still trying to find this function, the uh, thickness of the shadow mapping line, it is depending on the underlying shape. It can go from being an edge to being firm to having like a soft transition. And the best way how you can do that with a traditional pencil is to tilt the angle. You have a good sharp pencil with a long, where you can see actually the graphite, and you tilt the angle. And that way you can uh, make those transitions, these different transitions. Um, digital drawing also has a function like that, but I still need to find that brush who's applying it in the right way, the way I want it. So this needs to be symmetrical. I want it to be symmetrical because of the light source. I want it to be like really vertically over his head. Right over his head. Actually, because this is an unnatural curve for my wrist, so I'm rotating. Instead of changing my wrist, I'm gonna change the picture, or the position of the picture. It seems to be the easier thing. Oh, my back. Okay. It's 
so and then it goes down and then fur even further we actually have to do some shadow mapping on top of the hand too we'll do it where it makes sense So So now I will go in with some lighter colors. On the top side. Okay. Maybe I can do also some here. But then I would like to do it with another symmetrical line. Yeah, that's good. Does that make sense? Yeah, that looks good. We can um, want to add some little details here regarding the the light. Maybe that'll help. I think the two little lights are just about enough. Switching the symmetry off. Now we create a new layer on, on the layer 6. You see that? It's called layer 10. We hover over the, like, hit the alt key and hover with the uh, cursor over this border until this arrow appears. We can move it in. We want to make a brighter. We want to do the highlights, right? Not the highlights, the, the middle tones. And we are going to draw on one side of all the shadow mapped areas. Okay. And because I did that trick, I don't have to pay attention on the outer boundaries. There's no way I can paint now on the white area. There is a little mistake because the hand is going over the cheeks and then it suddenly stops. That's something I need to handle later. I might because he's moving his head backwards. I want to put some of the middle tones on the back of his nose, you know.
Da Gino. D A G I N O. D E. D A. G I N O. Yeah. <laughs> Why? There will be more shadow mapping on the inner side of the face, which is actually going towards the nose. I'm almost feeling that I'm not doing enough justice for the nose. I actually want this whole thing white. The light is almost shining into his nose. What is that? I really can't paint it there. Can somebody tell me why? Ah. There was another layer. It was irritating. So, you created more. Can you do it like that? Let's, let's be a little bit more bold about where the sun hits, okay? Where the light hits. Let's say this whole area. This all hits the surface. Same thing here. Maybe just about under where the arch is going back. There. It's way more expressive than just having light on the ridge of the nose. That's why we do it right here. Like that, huh? Good thing I made the shadow mapping on the uh, Specific side uh, layer, I mean.
Sí. It did put it in a separate layer, right? The shadow mapping. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, I did. Okay, good. So let's get rid of that, what we did earlier. This is not right. This does not feel completely right. This one is outdated. This is outdated. Correct this. And this we have to correct anyway. Okay. Let's go back in and make the new shadow mapping, which now goes around here. Just like that. Then we should have something similar here. We create a little bit of difference. Just feels more organic than. The whole nose is actually covered. Maybe just here it won't be. Like where the nose is going under the nostrils, right? Same thing here. And then here. Fade it out there, we'll see how we are going to deal with that. And we have that here. All right. Let me observe it. Let me see if I can do something better here regarding these areas. to make that consistent.
Now I can paint it the color. It's just a, a lot of detail work here. I should not go too deep into the detail of the shadow mapping right now. Because it's too early at a stage where we are carving out like the most important shapes. I'm just filling the colors there in where I already defined it. This can go out. This can go out, dark, and dark. Here it's bright. This whole thing is bright. Except maybe this tooth here on that side. The lower corner of his upper lip is also facing downward, that's why I don't give it the brighter tone marking a plane change and giving it a some sense of three mud dimensionality. Like so. And then there's a lot of light coming on the inside of the mouth, especially on the lower jaw. I mean his whole tongue is actually his whole tongue is lit up. Turn it a little bit down. That is only the, the light will be coming down this far. Because the upper side of his throat will be a darker gray for sure, I can tell you. This lip again, bright. Because you have a little, when the jaw is opening up, it's 
revealing a little hole. You can see actually in the skull. No, it's not tissue going in. It's just it's just that a hole is there. Okay. the light even further Bring it all the way to the to the glasses I feel like I made this, the corner of his skull on the right side a little bit farther than it should be it's either I should make it like on this side or I should make it like on this side and we'll see about that we will debate Pushing the boundaries of the shadow mapping even further. Maybe in this case it would have been smarter to start with a grey color instead of first trying to define it with black, and then going in. Because when you do it with a with a color immediately, you get a feeling. It does that feel right or is it too far, right? Painting is always like some sort of trial and error. Trying to find shapes. This has nothing to do with the reference anymore. It has a different light source where it comes from the side. So I'm trying to push things around and see what sticks. This part, especially the outer part, hit by light. We are sculpting right now. Sculpting out the shapes carving I will close the stream in 15 minutes 15? 15 I think we made a good progress I had some friends stopping by Saying hello. You can't go too bright outside.
but it's still kind of going until here. Okay, let's now go one step further and put in even darker colors in. For example, the nose. It will be black. It's interesting because the back of his throat, you see it, it's, it has a lighter tone than the inside, the upper inside of that, of the mouth. These are even more facing down, so that it's even darker. Same thing with here. Especially the Ray Ban. Just because it needs to have a different color than the skin, I don't want it to have it the same. I'm already going darker in there. Also, the reflections will be brighter. Your stomach? Mm. Yeah, let's eat big. I can't see you starve. You can make these gaps here a little dark. By doing that, you give it additional depth. Teeth are casting a shadow on that side. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, we have a cool monkey there. I wanted to make that one darker. Sure. His glasses. Says grace here. So To erase the dark one, like so and so. Thank you. Schön. This entwickelt sich hier. Nach und nach passiert mehr. Jetzt bin ich gleich hungrig. Und wir essen was. So. Und ansonsten, was steht bei dir am Wochenende an? Irgendwie muss ich das mal ein bisschen aufweichen, das gefällt mir noch nicht so.
Stoff halten. So, einfach nur noch das Shadow Mapping hier und schauen uns dann an, wie es dann ausschaut in seiner Gesamtheit. Vielleicht passen wir es ja auch nochmal an. So. weiter reinführt. So. Und dann gehen wir es hier nochmal raus. Könnte man so machen, ne? Aber das sehen wir dann auch. Okay. Das war's soweit. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining. We're gonna continue soon. And uh, I'll see you in the next stream. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Dankeschön. Bis dann.